Is your tailstock wheel hard to turn? If so, it's time for you to put a little maintenance. Let me show you how easy it is. The tailstock quill should turn easily in and out. If it's not going in and out, we're going to remove the quill, clean and lubricate the mechanism. I'm using the 3520B uh, tailstock as an example, but other, other lathes are similar. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the hand wheel. Your hand wheel may have a, a set screw on the end or, or uh, screws. This has got a couple of uh, set screws with an Allen, uh, removable, easily removable by an Allen wrench. So we're going to loosen those. Now, similar to uh, the Pyromatic, uh, it has one, this has one uh, locking screw and it uses a different uh, size Allen wrench. I uh, see I have just a little bit of uh, Loctite on here to keep these things from vibrating loose. I'm going to go ahead and take them out. I'm going to put them in this little uh, magnetic tray from Harbor Freight. Make sure I don't drop them. All right, so that slips out. We're going to set that set that down. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure this ratchet gets uh, gets loosened. Now we're going to turn this lead screw by hand until it ejects the quill. And then we're going to take it out. So it's reverse threaded, righty loosey. Okay, all right, so next we want to clean this out, we want to, uh, and you can see, I think you can see the dust and shavings I've got in, in, in this thing. So we're going to knock those loose. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean that uh, brush. You can use a, tooth uh, a toothbrush or a detail brush, but let's go ahead and clean these threads. I'm going to just clean this with a little WD-40 by just spraying it on here. WD-40 is not a lubricant. I'm using it as a, it's kind of a mild solvent to clean this, clean this up. I'm going to okay, set that next down. I'm going to look at, look at the quill. Uh, we have this slot here and different lathes going to do it, uh, handle it different ways. This has a pin on the side. Okay, with the Jet Mini lathe, we can see it's very similar. We have a slot. The only difference is the ratchet, instead of having a locking mechanism on top, actually rides inside this quill. So if you if you thread it all the way out, this thing will start start spinning, and that's not a not a good thing. So we're going to loosen it, uh, actually, and we're going to just slide this slide this out. And we can see we've got a very similar, uh, very similar arrangement, uh, righty loosey on this one. Let's go ahead and take it out. Now we're gonna, we're gonna clean this, clean this quill. We're gonna clean the entire outside. I'm just gonna rub it down. Now we're gonna look for any nicks, burrs. Now a real common thing is for that pin. Uh, that that rides in this this quill like this uh, raises a burr right here because of the torque on this and it can raise a tiny little burr that you can't even see it uh, and that's easily resolved by taking a fine file and just cleaning this edge up right here all the way down and I feel a little I don't feel any nicks or scratches. Mine actually runs fairly smooth, uh, so I don't see any real problems. It's funny though; I do see a I do feel some nicks right here. So I do, I do see some, I do see some scratches along here. Um, and I guess it's the now that I think about it. On this case, the lathe 
turning this way is going to put torque on it on the bottom, not the top. So this is really where it's going to get a raised burr, and you need to, to look at maybe just cleaning that up a little bit. That's a pretty sharp edge there. So I think I'm going to take a uh, a small file. So I do see some minor damage here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reestablish this chamfer with a very fine file by just filing it down right there on the corner relieving any sharp edges. I'm also going to take it and just get along the edge here where there may be where it may very well have raised a small burr. Mine went fairly smoothly so I don't think it's going to take much to kind of bring it back into into shape. This is fairly soft metal. Yours may only need a cleaning. I've got a little bit of... Might be a little grime here, so let me try to clean that up. And now I'm going to clean the inside by spraying a little bit. WD-40. Again, I'm not going to use this as a lubricant. I'm just going to use this to clean it up. And this side is threaded. So I think I want to use the toothbrush to kind of clean those threads out. Now, here's where the Morse taper is. You're going to visibly check that. I don't, don't see any, I don't think you can see, I don't see any problems there, so I'm just going to wipe that clean. Actually, I'm going to use this 12 gauge bore brush. Clean it. Make sure I don't feel anything sharp or any, any sharp edges. Uh, now, all we've got. I'm gonna now I'm gonna clean the uh, taper on the on the tailstock that the quill goes into. And I see quite a bit of debris down in there so I'm going to get the uh, my air compressor and blow this out whoa much better this is a, fi a very finely machined uh, inside I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little WD-40 clean it up and that looks like it's got it all right now we're going to lubricate lubricate this there's any number of different uh some people say leave them dry. Um, for the most part, this, there's not too much dust that can get back here, but you can see that I did have a considerable, a certain amount. So I'm going to use a dry, a dry lubricant. I'm going to use a dry lubricant. Uh, I don't think the brand is that makes that much difference, but this uh, it lubricates almost any surface. Low friction does not contain silicone, so it won't interfere with uh, any finishes. Uh, and it does dry and leave, leave a light lubricant. So I'm going to just shake this up a little bit. And we're going to give it just a moment to dry. And I 
think I'm going to do the same with the with the outside of this the quill uh, actually I think uh, yeah I'm just gonna put a little bit on the outside of the quill so when we reassemble it all right now okay I'm gonna uh, reinsert this I'm going to just slip it in and maneuver it until I can feel it popping up into place and sticking out the back side now I'm going to go ahead and take the the quill slide it in place uh, with the the set pin going down that slot and then I'm simply going to re-engage the screw and now it retracts smoothly now all I got to do is uh, put the hand wheel on look, looking for the spots for the uh, where the two set screws go on the back so I'm just going to turn these so there's a flat and look for the flat on this side actually there's a flat here and then a mark here so there's a flat there now I'm going to take the grub screw or the set screw reinsert it carefully not dropping it now I'm going to the flat areas so the flat set screw would have a flat area to rest against to hold it firm okay here's where my handy dandy magnetic pickup stick comes in handy the grub screw tighten up that grub screw and then we turn the other location and put in the other grub screw And now it turns very smoothly and easily. Now, uh, most lathes will have some type of ratchet locking nut on it, a uh, uh, handle on it. If, you, if you're missing one of these, uh, click on the icon up here in the corner, <laughs> back here. Uh, and that will link you to a video on uh, repair and replacement of these, these ratchet uh, knobs on, on your lathe. I've got a video on that. And again, let's let's verify that, that it turns smoothly. I think this is the first time I've made I've uh, done any maintenance on this since I've had it for for 11 years, and it was a couple three years old when I got it. So now we're now we're good.